Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'm so sorry that I'm not able to be with you in person this evening. I'm in Ibadan as I speak due to a scheduling conflict that I did not realize until about a week ago. The MBCC graciously accepted that I record my remarks, which would then be played back to you this evening. I would have loved to be with you all in person, most especially to celebrate my dear friend and Wimbis sister, Bisi Adeyemi, as she assumes the office of president of the MBCC. Congratulations once again, Bisi, and may your tenure be known for good and for progress in the business and commercial relationships between Nigeria and Britain, of course, the Omicron variant notwithstanding. Before I begin my speech, I want to let you know that it will be short. No matter when you speak at a dinner like this, before or after dinner, you need to be quick. If it is before, guests want you to be quick so they can eat. If it is after, guests want you to be quick so they can go home. I have no idea at which point of the event this recording is being played back, but I will assure you that I will be efficient in my speech. I have been steeped in technology since 1983 when I graduated with a bachelor's degree in electrical and electronic engineering. And since then, my experience in both the public and private sector has validated, revalidated and confirmed my belief that technology is indeed an enabler of governance and economic prosperity. An enabler is defined as a person or a thing that makes something possible. Information and communication technologies, ICTs, are definitely a thing that makes economic prosperity and good governance possible for a nation, especially a developing nation like Nigeria. If we didn't believe this before, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us in many different ways the importance of information and communication technologies. They saved us from a total collapse of the global economy. Imagine the lockdowns and travel restrictions without the benefits of connectivity, the benefits of Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and the likes. I know many of us are tired of all these things now. But let me use my current context and role as a VC investor, a venture capital investor in Africa, to illustrate more graphically how technology enables economic prosperity. The first example I will give is Pula, one of our portfolio companies. And let me give some context first. Agriculture in Africa has massive social and economic footprint. About 70% of the population of Nigeria is engaged in subsistence or smallholder farming, and about 23% of Nigeria's GDP comes from agriculture. As a group, smallholder farmers are among the poorest and the most marginalized in the world, and they're disproportionately affected and unprotected from adverse events such as bad weather, pests and crop diseases that affect their yield and in turn their income and their livelihood. In Sub-Saharan Africa, Nigeria included, just about 3% of farmers have access to agricultural insurance to reduce their exposure to low yield and field harvest. They are too hard to get to, they're too poor to pay, and in truth, they're not properly accounted for. So data for actual calculations that underwriters need and use to price insurance products are hard to obtain and very hard to vet. Pula is an insured tech startup in our portfolio, TLCOM's portfolio, using machine learning and historical weather and production data to offer area yield index insurance to farmers. They provide the actual data for insurance companies to price and underwrite this risk at less than $5 or 2,500 naira per season. Payment for the insurance is innovatively bundled into already existing agricultural subsidy programs of national governments and also of NGOs, making these subsidy programs more productive and more useful than ever before. Pula has insured over 5 million farmers in Africa to date, several of them in Nigeria. This is tackling economic prosperity from the largest section of our population and one of the largest contributors to GDP. This could not be done at scale without business models and innovations that have significantly leveraged information and communication technologies. There are probably no subsistence farmers in this room today. So while the last example may interest you, it may not resonate with your context or with your own experiences. So let me use the example of another portfolio company, AutoCheck. The process of selling and buying cars in most African cities, Lagos included, is a major pain point. Prices are not standardized, which means you need to have conversations or visit multiple auto dealers physically to ensure you're not being cheated. It's difficult to ascertain the condition of the car, and even when you solve all of these problems, you still have to deal with financing if you don't have enough money, and options are limited and they're expensive. And then after you've successfully purchased your car, getting insurance, maintenance, registration, all of those other things are a nightmare. AutoCheck automates a price discovery process, showing at the click of a button the expected price for a particular make, model, and age of an automobile. 
It provides a platform where individuals can easily sell their cars, they can buy new cars with access to credit, solve all the documentation processes and access certified technicians for repairs and servicing. For car dealers, AutoCheck provides them with a digital platform which increases their reach for buyers and also serves as a source of additional revenue for all the service partners involved in the value chain of purchasing, selling and maintaining a car. AutoCheck highlights how technology can serve as an enabler of economic prosperity at several income levels while at the same time improving the quality of people's lives. We have 11 of these kind of companies in our portfolio of investments and they alongside with thousands of technology startups across Nigeria are using technology to solve what we like to call grand challenges, accelerating access to large underserved markets in education, in health, in agriculture and financial services to name a few, discovering and engaging the African consumer of whom very little is known to enable small and large businesses alike serve them better and deliver higher revenues for themselves. Fixing broken industries, fixing broken value chains as I've described with AutoCheck above. In the last three years, two Nigerian companies, Flutterwave and Interswitch, have been valued at over $1 billion. Three if you count Andela, which has very strong Nigerian antecedents. There is a triple collateral benefit of these technology companies solving these challenges creating jobs and creating wealth all at the same time. And the world is paying attention. African startups are on track to close the year with almost $4 billion in venture capital investments. Nigeria's share of that is just shy of $2 billion. Venture finance into tech companies is potentially becoming our largest source of foreign direct investment. These funds are fueling innovation, they're fueling youth entrepreneurship, and an inclusive economic prosperity. Let me now move to the second part of the topic. How can technology or ICTs enable governance? This has been very well researched and proven and indeed the Nigerian government, successive administrations have and are still are striving to use ICTs to enable governance, albeit with mixed results. Several government services can be accessed online through citizen facing online platforms, application for driver's licenses, passports, company registration, tax returns, at least in Lagos State, to name a few. Payment for government services through various payment gateways have to a certain extent reduced revenue leakages and improved transparency and accountability. Websites and other forms of electronic media that inform and engage citizens. All of government plans and all their different uh, activities are available on the internet, including all the statistical data that is collected by the National Bureau of Statistics. Clearly, there's still some way to go for us to really get the benefits of ICTs in governance. As I said earlier, successive government efforts have resulted in mixed outcomes and results, but they are headed in the right direction, and I think that's the most important thing. I think I can speak from experience when I say that national and subnational governments need to focus on several areas to ensure ICTs really enable governance and citizen satisfaction in Nigeria. They need to work with all stakeholders to deliver ubiquitous, fast and affordable internet so that all citizens across Nigeria can benefit from the increasing amount of useful content solutions that tech startups are providing in the key areas of affordable access to quality education and of course quality healthcare. Governments can ensure that this infrastructure in all its ramifications is extended to government ministries, departments and agencies so that they can deliver more citizen services online in a seamless convenient and user-friendly manner and ensure that civil servants have the capacity and the competence to work productively in a digitally enabled ecosystem as we have today. Governments at the national and subnational level can support the development of digital literacy skills to ensure that all Nigerians can participate in the digital economy as it evolves. They can also embrace social media and continue to publish more information online to inform and engage citizens while deploying innovative regulation to minimize content that harms both state and individual players. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of the evening.